here. What if an advanced civilization from another planet put us here just to build, you know, cities and, and, and a habitable planet just for them to move in, bro? Et ça croit moi ça fait mal En fait t'es comme une fleur ouais tu m'as fan Et t'étais la plus belle à mes yeux mais tu m'as mis sur le What's good YouTube, you already know the vibes man I'm back with another reaction This time we got some more uh, requests for this channel that Posts a lot of science stuff man A lot of stuff about climate, space, earth And just a lot of stuff about science man And, and one thing when I was in school I really like science, I ain't gonna lie man I really like learning about space And everything else like that so I'm I'm really kind of messing with these videos heavy, man. And y'all are requesting me to react to more of them. So I like that, man. You guys want to see it? I want to watch it. It's a win-win situation, man. Uh, today we checking out what do alien civilizations look like? The car. I can't pronounce that scale. Um, we're gonna we're gonna check it out. I'm really into aliens and stuff like that. So hopefully this video is lit. Um. I appreciate y'all coming out. Don't forget that showing love is free. So y'all can drop a like. You know what I'm saying? Share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe, man. Hit that big red button. If that button red, you will spare. That's all I got to say, man. And hit that bell, man. Turn on the notice. Simple. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget that I stream on Twitch every single night. And my Twitch is the same thing as my YouTube, man. So come through, boys. But other than that, what do alien civilizations look like? Let's check it out right now. The observable universe is a big place that's been around for more than 13 billion years. Up to 2 trillion galaxies made up of something like 20,000 billion billion stars. What the holy already is... Yo, my, my brain is going in circles. Hold up. Wait a second. Pause. Can we, can we start that over? It's a big place that's been around... Okay, how you the observable universe. how you know how long the universe been around, bro? Have you have you traveled around the universe and asked the guy that runs the universe how long it's been around? Like, hey man, how long you been? How long you own this place? Like, bro, how do y'all know how long the universe been around, man? Speculations and theories, like, how do we really know this? Universe is a big place that's been around for more than thirteen billion years. Up to two trillion galaxies made up of what? thirteen billion. Say what? The observable universe is a big place that's been around. The observable universe. Okay, just what we can see. For more than thirteen billion years. Thirteen billion years. And our sun's only been around for five billion years, right? So what? Thirteen billion years. So what, this shit just, so what, the universe is constantly growing like a forest or something? Like, you got new plants and new trees and stuff growing up out of nowhere? Now, we got we got new planets that move into rotations in our galaxy? You're like, wow, man, shit, I gotta learn about this, man. I gotta get on my science kick. I ain't gonna lie. Space intrigues me. Up to two trillion galaxies made up of something like 20,000 billion billion stars. Oh, my. You see that? Hey, chat, look at, look at that number at the top. 20 billion billion that's what i want my bank account to look like chat i'm not stopping till my bank account look like that man my bank account better look like that before i'm dead that's all i got to say surround our home galaxy in the milky way alone scientists assume there are some 40 billion earth-like planets in the habitable zone of their stars okay when we look at these numbers wait, wait, it's what hard in the habitable zone of their to assume there are some 40 billion earth-like planets in the habitable zone of their stars 40 billion earth-like planets now he says earth-like planets does that mean just tell me does that mean that that we could live on those planets like those planets got water you know some greenery uh, you know what I'm saying? You think that it's gonna be like it looks like you could have life on the planet, right? Cause this this planet right here look like it's it's not livable, bro. It's yellow and purple, like like was the water orange and, and the land is purple? Was this Dr. Seuss planet or something? Like, when we look at like, these numbers, on, bro. it's hard to imagine that there is nobody else out there. 
It would change our perception of ourselves forever if we found others. Just knowing that this vast place is not dead would shift our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant quarrels. Yo, he's not lying. Holy, he just said the deepest shit ever. Our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant Holy shit, he just said some deep shit. Others. Just knowing that this vast place is not dead would shift our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant quarrel. Just knowing that space ain't dead and there's other people out there, other other races, right? That we call aliens or whatever. That would shift our interest outward and stop making us fight. Yo, so so pretty much, bro. Listen, I got the way. To end racism right now, bro. The only way we're going to come together as one race, as the human race, is if, like, we see some aliens, bro. You feel me? If we see some aliens with eight legs and eight arms or some or some crazy, even if they ain't, even if they look just like us, bro. You know? Like, that, that'll put everybody on one planet. Everybody be like, bro, we the same. We all from this planet. You know what I'm saying? It's not from, I'm from O block, you from D block. I'm going to shoot your ass because you want, you want my block type shit. Like, no, no, no. No, it's going to be like, we all from the same planet. He from that planet. It might be some beefs between planets. But, like, it wouldn't be no, it wouldn't be no racism. You know, I feel like racism would die. I feel like racism would die. As soon as we know that there's other planets with life on it and stuff, it's going to be like, bro, like, like, yeah, yeah, we different colors and stuff, but, bro, we the same. That's why I be trying to tell people all the time because I'm colorblind, but, bro, you can't get it through some people's head because some people just, like, they taught to be racist at, like, as they a kid because, you know, no kids are racist, bro. You're born, I mean, you're born pure, bro. Like, you're born... You don't got no hate in your heart until somebody teaches you hate in your heart, bro. So, shit. I, I hope, like, because I feel like they already know aliens exist. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I feel like they already know aliens exist. So, as soon as they come out and tell us and stop keeping it a secret, you know, it's going to be a lot more peaceful out here, man. But before looking for our my hard drive. Hey, Mills, my hard drive broke. We have a problem it died. What are we actually looking I got a new one on the way. And what are we actually looking for, man? Please. That's a cool intro. I ain't gonna lie. In a universe that big and old, we have to assume that civilizations start millions of years apart from each other and develop in different directions and speeds. So, not only are we looking over distances of dozens to hundreds of thousands of years, because that's time going we're up. looking for a civilization ranging from cavemen to super advanced. So we need a conceptual framework to enable us to think better thoughts that make us able to search better. Are there universal rules that intelligent species follow? Currently, our civilization sample size is only one. Now I ain't got no so Xbox. We make incorrect assumptions based solely on ourselves. Still, better than nothing. We know that humans started out with nothing but minds and hands that could build tools. We know that humans are curious, competitive, greedy for resources. How do you know that, man? How do you know humans just started with vines and, and their hands to do their own work? How do you know that, you know, like billions of years ago, uh, a civil, an advanced civilization from another planet, like they planted us here? What if an advanced civilization from another planet put us here just to build you know, cities and, and, and a habitable planet just for them to move in, bro. Like, what if all this time we've been building civilizations, cities, and countries all over the world just for them to come down and take it over and move right in? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we know that we just started as cavemen who, 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 you know, that we was just getting, you know, bro, how, how do we know that that's what happened, bro? What if, what if they put something in the water and we start growing out the water and stuff? And then we we got on land and was like, oh, we're just here. Oh, we're we're just here. We're just here, man. Like, bro, nobody knows how we started here. I would love to know that though. But like, how you know some advanced civilization didn't didn't put us here and we are them? You feel me? Come on, man.
Come on, Ammo. And expansionist. The more of these qualities our ancestors had, the more successful they were in the civilization building game. Being one with nature is nice, but it's not the path to irrigation systems or gunpowder or cities. So it's reasonable to assume that aliens able to take over their home planet also have these qualities. And if aliens have to follow the same laws of physics, then there is a measurable metric for progress, energy use. Human progress can be measured very precisely by how much energy we extracted from our environment and how we made it usable to do things. We started with muscles until we learned to control fire. Then we made machines that used kinetic energy from water and wind. As our machines got better and our knowledge of materials expanded, we began to harness the concentrated energy from dead plants we dug up from the ground. As our energy consumption grew exponentially, so did the abilities of our civilization. Between 1800 and 2015, population size had increased sevenfold while humanity was consuming 25 times more energy. It's likely that this process will continue into the far future. Mm. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of catalyzing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over Gan. So like this type of shit? Okay, so that's us in 2015 right here. And that's us in 2123, right? Just imagine what kind of shape the planet is going to be in, bro. Just imagine what kind of shape the planet is going to be in if like that year, bro. Just imagine what the planet is going to look like. I can only imagine they probably going to they probably going to build stuff around the stratosphere of the planet. Some I don't know, bro. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Kanye, what up? Far future. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of categorizing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. The Kardashev scale, a method of ranking civilizations for Kardashev energy use. The scale has been refined and expanded on over the decades, but in general, it puts civilizations into four different categories. A type 1 civilization is able to use the available energy of their home planet. A type 2 civilization is able to use the available energy of their star and planetary system. A type 3 civilization is able to use the available energy of their galaxy. A type 4 civilization is able to use the available energy of multiple galaxies. Holy, holy, that's what I'm talking about. Hold up. I'm doing reaction videos, Cayenne, to post on my YouTube. If you haven't seen my YouTube, go check it out. Drop some likes. Um... Holy, that's crazy. So you telling me he thinks that there's civilizations out there that can use energy from multiple different... Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Cayenne, go look at my YouTube. You'll see what I'm doing. These levels differ by orders of magnitude. It's like comparing an ant colony to a human metropolitan area. To ants, we are so complex and powerful, we might as well be gods. So to make the scale more useful, we need subcategories. On the lower end of the spectrum, there are type 0 to type 1 civilizations. Anything from hunter-gatherers to something we could achieve in the next few hundred years. These might actually be abundant in the Milky Way. But a civilization that is not actively transmitting radio signals into space might be as close as our nearest stellar neighbor, the Alpha Centauri system, and we would have no way of realizing they exist. But even if they transmitted radio signals like we do, it might not be very helpful. On an interstellar scale, humanity is practically invisible. Our signals may extend over an impressive 200 light years, but this is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. And even if someone were listening after a few light years of the Milky Way, 200 light years, 200 light years? And the and the Milky Way is a hundred thousand light years long. Why? What? What? I see you, Kaya. This is only a tiny fraction what? of the Milky Way. And even if someone were listening, after a few light years, our signals decay into noise, impossible to identify as the source of an intelligent species. Today, humanity ranks at about level zero point seven five. We have altered our planet. 
we've created huge structures, mined and stripped mountains, removed rainforests and drained swamps. We've created rivers and lakes and changed the composition and temperature of the atmosphere. If progress continues, and we don't make Earth uninhabitable, we will become a full Type 1 civilization in the next few hundred years. Any civilization that becomes a Type 1 is bound to look outside because it's likely that it's still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist. The next reasonable step towards transitioning to Type 2 is trying to alter and mine other planets and bodies. This might start with outposts in space, transition to infrastructure and industries near the home planet, move on to colonies, and end with terraforming other planets by changing their atmosphere, their rotation, or position. As a civilization expands and uses more and more stuff and space, its energy consumption scales with them. So, at some point, they may embark on the largest project a lower Type II civilization can take on, harnessing the energy of their star by building a Dyson Swarm. Once this megastructure oh, what? is finished, energy has become practically unlimited for molding the home system however they see fit. If they are still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist, and now have complete control over their home system, stellar infrastructure in place, and the energy output of a star, the next frontier moves to other stars light years away. For a Type 2 civ- Wow, so that's really what we about to do, man. That's really what we about to do? We really about to just- we about to try to put something around the sun. You know how hot the sun is? Do we got a material on Earth? Do we even have material on Earth that's not going to melt when it gets near the sun? Do we even got that type of stuff on Earth? Like, do we got something that strong that's not going to melt when it's that close to the sun? I ain't heard of nothing like that. Y'all tell me if y'all... I'm going to have to go Google. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be laying in my bed at night tonight Googling stuff. Like, what can withstand the heat of the sun at like 10,000 meters away from it like civilization the distance to other stars might feel like the distance between earth and pluto because the space station is only 250 miles away from the sun the space station is only 250 miles away from the sun there's no way or do you mean the earth it does to us today technically within reach but only with immense investments in terms of time ingenuity and resources not from the earth okay this begins their transition towards That's what i'm saying Kaya. this step is so far beyond us that it becomes hard to imagine what exactly these challenges will look like and how they'll be solved will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years will they be able to communicate and keep a share times of hundreds or thousands like, look at the thing around the sun right there, bro. Will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years? Will they be able to communicate and keep a shared culture and biology between colonies light years apart? Or will they split into separate Type 2 civilizations? Maybe even different species? Are there deadly challenges between the stars? So the closer a species gets to Type 3, the harder it becomes to fathom what it might actually look like. They might discover new physics, may understand and control dark matter and energy, or be able to travel faster than light. Huh. We might be unable to grasp their motives, technology and actions. Humans are the ants, trying to understand the galactic metropolitan area. A high Type 2 civilization might already consider humanity too primitive to even talk to. A Type 3 civilization <laughs> might feel about as like we feel about the bacteria living on the anthill. Maybe they wouldn't even consider us conscious or our survival relevant. We could only pray that they're nice gods. But the scale doesn't necessarily... Wow, yo! The animations are crazy. They wouldn't even consider us yo that could actually be built though like look what he got type 3.1 he, he coming up there with a spaceship with a bubble on it that holds it sucking the energy from the sun bro what if, what if we had aliens that just came in the solar system and in the milky way and just started sucking the energy out the sun bro conscious or our survival relevant that's the only thing when we do run into aliens i already think we ran into aliens it's probably aliens that are in the government right now you know what I'm saying? Like, they probably look like us and everything. I wouldn't be surprised. But, like, what was I about to say? But, uh, but, bro, when we do run into aliens, officially, publicly, 
let's hope they nice, man. Let's hope they nice. Because if they come in from they planet to our planet, they already way more advanced than we are. Way more. We could only pray that they're nice gods. I'm not lying. But the scale pray they nice. Some scientists suggest there might be type 4 and type 5 civilizations whose influence stretches over galaxy clusters or superclusters, structures comprising thousands of galaxies and trillions of stars. Ultimately, there might be a type Omega civilization, able to manipulate the entire universe and possibly others. Type Omega civilizations might be the actual creators of our universe for reasons beyond our comprehension. Maybe they were just bored. As flawed as this classification may be, this thought experiment is already telling us interesting things. If our ideas about the nature of species that form interstellar civilizations is sort of correct, then we can be pretty sure that there are no civilizations of type 3 and beyond near the Milky Way. Their influence would in all likelihood be so all-encompassing and their technology so far above our own that we couldn't miss them. The galaxy should flash okay. their activity in thousands of star systems. We should be able to see or detect their artifacts or movements between different parts of their empire. Even if a type 3 civilization or movements between... Hold up. Ain't no aliens. Kaya, so you telling me out of how big space is, you don't think there's any other... Any other races or any other... There might be more humans out there, but I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But you don't think there's aliens, you know what I'm saying? You don't think there's there's other living things on other planets in the in the fucking... In, in the universe? You don't think that? We low-key might be dead before any of this happens. I mean, we definitely gonna be dead, you feel me? But our kids, our kids' kids... Our friends, kids, 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 great, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, a thousand years down the road, we might be going, we might just have wormholes to different planets and stuff like that. Listen, it's already going to be proven. Let me tell y'all what they already got. They already created a way to be immortal. They already have a way to be immortal through technology, bro. You ain't heard about the whole thing that when you get older... They can put like your soul into a chip and then put the chip into a, a, a AI body. You ain't heard about that? Come on, man. Y'all ain't heard about that? It, no, clamps, it doesn't end. Space is infinite because it's constantly growing. At least that's what they say. They say space is constantly spreading out. It's constantly growing. It's constantly just getting wider and wider and stretching out. It's not just the end. It's not like like a wall that stops, bro. Like space is constantly stretching out. So, but I mean, at least that's what the scientists say, you know. In different parts of their empire, even if a Type Three civilization did exist in the past and died a mysterious death, we should be able to detect some of the remnants of that. Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus team up. Oh my god! Oh my god! Epic stories. The largest streaming TV library. And can't miss sports. Their empire. But when scientists looked, they didn't find remnants of harvested stars, decaying megastructures, or scars of great interstellar wars. Mm. So they're very likely not out there and never were. In a sense, this is very sad, but also very reassuring. It leaves the galaxy to us and others similar to us. So the most promising civilizations to look for may be somewhere in the spectrum from type 1.5 to type 2.5. Mm. They wouldn't be too advanced to understand them and their motives. They may have finished their first megastructures and they might be in the process of moving stuff between stars and transmitting enormous amounts of information into space by accident or on purpose. Nah, nah, nah. Listen, they say it might be another place for people to live. Listen, we we ain't never went nowhere but the moon, bro. We ain't never went nowhere but the moon, okay? Ain't nothing on the moon. Listen, the day that we go to another planet that's got green, all the day we go to another planet that look like Earth that's got water and green and, you know, they're probably going to have some type of technology to tell you what the temperature is and what the CO2 levels and everything are on the planet before you even get on the planet. You know what I'm saying? Bro, the day that we do that, 
is the day we find a, a, a whole like a alien civilization. I'm telling you, because they're going to go to a to a planet that look like Earth. that look like it's inhabitable and it's going to be a whole nother race there. I'm telling you, they're going to go there. It's going to be some funky looking animals and stuff. Yeah. Just wait. He would probably also look to the stars and look for others. Then again, maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe progress to type two does not mean expanding outwards, and humanity is still too immature to imagine otherwise. For now, all we really know is that we haven't seen anybody yet, but we've only just started looking. Until we finally find friendly super aliens and can ask them to explain the rules of the universe to us, most of us have to make do with learning stuff ourselves. Whether you're going back to school, leaving home for the first time, or if you're just entering a new phase in your life, our shop is stocked and ready for all your back-to-school needs. Notebooks and notepads to organize your work, stickers and mugs to make things look nice, lots and lots of posters to turn your dorm or room into an inspiring oasis of knowledge. We have new shirts and for the first time, a Kurz Gazant Earth Sweater. Wait, wait, how do, you, how do you say his name? We have new shirts and for the first time, a Kurz Gazant Earth Sweater. Oh, I can't even say that word, boys. Holy. Knowledge. We have new shirts and for the first time, a Kurz Gazant Earth Sweater. A Kurz? Kurz? We have new shirts and for the first time, a Kurz Gazant Earth Sweater. A Kugs Kazant. Kugs Kazant. That's how you say the name? We have new shirts and for the first time, a Kugs Kazant Earth Sweater. Kugs Kazant. Okay, so everybody go to Kugs Kazant's channel. Go cop some merch, man. Go cop some merch. These guys obviously got the best animations on YouTube, bro. These guys got the best animations on YouTube. These guys got animations like it's a movie, man. I ain't gonna lie, this video was lit. Listen, anybody out there, you guys are small-minded to think that there's not other species out there in the universe, bro. As big and as vast as the universe is, listen, ain't no way we the only planet with life on it. I'm telling you, bro. There's not billions of planets. There's billions of galaxies, bro. And yeah, like, you would really be small-minded to think that, you know, some magical fairy put us on this planet and there's no other life outside it's just us you you would be small minded to think that all this shit happened in a bang and we're the special people that are the only people alive in in space bro ain't nothing that makes us special bro if you looked outside the planet and and space was small yeah maybe but bro with it with it being as big as space is there's no way there's not life out there on other planets, bro. You would be small-minded to think that, man. Come on, man. Listen, think for yourself. I know what books have taught you growing up and this and that, but sometimes you got to think for yourself, you know? You got to be like, hmm, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Okay, let me not listen to this book and this, this, and that. Okay, you know, if it's that big and we're that small compared to how big the space is and there's billions there's a billion billions of uh, planets and galaxies out there there's galaxies out there with hundreds of planets and there's billions of galaxies bro hmm do i think that on this one planet out of billions and trillions that we're the only planet with life on it bro yeah yeah we gotta be i mean yeah we're the only planet with life on it for sure ain't nobody else out there but us we're special Somebody, somebody special put us here. Yeah, it's probably another alien civilization that put us here, bro. It's probably some aliens that put us on this planet because they was like, damn, that planet looked like it's got potential. Let, let, let me put us on there. And shit, low key, you know, I'm just, I'm just speaking all theory right now, but low key, they probably already came back to check on us. And, you know, they probably talked to the president at the time and was like, listen, man, we put y'all here. I'm just going to tell y'all that. You, you the leader of the world? Okay, okay. We put y'all here. This is what goes on in the universe. Blah, blah, blah. Here's some new technology that y'all could use, you know, to advance what y'all got going on. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Here's about 10 of my guys. They're going to stay here. I'm going to be back in 100 years. Be ready. Now, these 10 guys right here, they're going to help you guys run the country and run everything. Man, there's probably aliens in the government, man. Stop playing with me. 
nothing is impossible, bro. What you see on the news, on TV is fake. And what you see in the movies is really the true shit. I ain't gonna lie. What, like, what, what you think is gonna be impossible, what you think would be impossible is really what's real, bro. That's how it be. But, um, yeah, man, I got caught up talking and stuff. Listen, uh, this video was lit. This video was crazy, man. Um, go cop some of his merch. Don't forget to drop a like, share it with your friends, you know, subscribe. Definitely subscribe, man. I'm trying to be on his level, man. I'm trying to be on his level. 13 million subs. Blessings, man. I'm trying to do what he's doing, man. And uh, turn on them, hit that bell for post notice, you feel me? Other than that, man, if you guys got any more content, especially like this, that you guys want me to react to, put it in the comments below, man. I think that's it for the video, man. So, if that wraps it up, everybody stay blessed. Stay safe out here in these screech screech, man, because you never know when an alien going to abduct you. All right, so stay safe. And I catch y'all on the next one, man. Et ça croit, moi, ça fait mal. En fait, t'es comme une fleur, ouais, tu m'as fané. T'étais la plus belle à mes yeux, mais tu m'as mis sur le.